Hey guys, so we're gonna show um, part eight. Um, we're gonna surface the head, um, check the guides, make sure the guy, if the guy, well, it needs to be re-guided or not. If, I'll re if it needs to be re-guided, I'll re-guide it. If it doesn't, I'm not going to on this one. I'll show a video of that later um, in the machining section. Um, if you guys do have anything that you wanna see, there is a bunch, I do have a bunch of videos in the machining section of, of different stuff, but just thought I'd let you know. Um, so we're into, like I said, part eight of the 12-valve en engine rebuild. Um, anyways, we'll get after surfacing this thing, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> All right, guys, I got the 12-valve uh, head in the, uh, the surfacer. We're going to surface this thing off. Um, we're going to do some work on this tonight. Um, got an hour and a half, two hours to, to work with, so... Uh, actually maybe two and a half hours um, to work with so we're gonna surface this thing off I already got it level um, and I got her all bolted down so we're just gonna start surfacing so you guys can see uh, there's gonna be a better of interference because the motor on the server still is going but you can actually see it in the video I've got uh, Good eight thou off this head right now. You can actually still see. So she definitely had some work which you're uh, we call banana. Yeah, it goes from end to end kind of idea. Yeah, it goes to show you. It looked not, didn't look too bad, but it's uh, definitely definitely had a work. So I'm gonna uh, finish surfacing this thing off here. All right, guys. I got the gutter all cleaned up. Surface turned out real nice, I like that. We ended up taking off about 14 thou to get it to clean up, so, which is about typical. It's usually between eight and eight and 16, probably. It's probably the most common. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out of here, um, and then we're gonna go over to the seat and guide machine, and we're gonna do some stuff on the seat and guide machine. Um, so I'll catch you guys over there. All right, guys, we're over here at the seat and guide machine now. And we're going to just look at a couple things here. So what I do is, I imagine some of you guys probably know about this. So this is a top hat style seal. This is an original style seal. Um, this isn't actually for a Cummins. I don't have one of the other original style ones here. So basically this is just going to normally, this is normally just going to shove, this might actually go on there, but. That's normally just going to shove on there like that. And then this one is actually, I have to machine this step down, but is actually going to be held down by the spring. And then also too, because we're not going to put seats in this, and in, in this unless it, we have to, and these are integral seats, so they don't come out. But um, you, this is going to add a shim basically to the bottom of the spring to add more spring pressure. So we're always gonna be cutting off some of that and we will measure it to make sure that we're within um, where we wanna be as far as installed stem height, um, or sorry, installed stem height and then also uh, installed uh, spring height. <clears throat> but this is gonna give you give us an extra, I guess, layer of don't, these ones under high boost don't pop off. These ones do like to pop off under high boost. So anyways, that's so that's what we're gonna do right now. So we're gonna machine it for this. Now you guys can buy a cutter. There is the cutter that I use. Um, and it has a uh, eight mil insert in it. Um, there again, I'm, I don't know what the part number of, it's a number 10. I don't know what the part number is. Maybe it's a number 10. <laughs> um, So basically what we have to do is we have to, this is, uh, you take a pilot, which is how you center your guide. Take this level, you turn the level, you level the head this way, then you level the head this way. And then you go back and check to make sure the head, head is level this way. I know it's good because I already checked it. Um, pull that out. Now, for instance, um, the pilot, um, I usually use live pilot. 
um, when I'm doing this. So you can do live pilot or dead pilot. I'll show you a little bit about that later in the video. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna machine all these off. Then we're gonna flip the head over um, and I will cut guides out and then we'll install guides and then we'll do a valve job. Um, not Like I said, none of this is really rocket science, but um, for guys that don't know, wanna see, here it is. So, what we're actually going to do is we're going to check to see what the guide clearance is. So you don't need to put guides in it. I hate to cut a hole. And put a new guide in it when if the surface inside, if everything is good. Guides on this are actually good. So basically, <clears throat> there is actually a gauge for checking and I'll show that later when we go to assembly. Um, but the guides in this thing aren't wiped out. So I'm not gonna put guides in a head that I don't need to put guides in. So it, now usually in an engine, lots of times these things will be hammered. This engine has been a part once before, at least once before because it had diff didn't have Cummins bearings in it. Um, there was a couple little things that were different. I had a couple different valves. So I don't know if maybe this is a different cylinder head. That's possible too. And it doesn't have that many kilometers on it. That's, you know, I don't know. But um, now if you're checking guides, um, you want to check in the way that the rocker is pushing on it. So the rocker on these is pushing back and forth this way. So when you do a rock test, you want to rock it like this. Now these are allowed to have like four and a half thou clearance and this these ones are good there isn't anything wrong with the guides in this thing so basically i'll show you what the process is and i'll show it in a later video on a head that it needs guides um so basically what you're going to do is you're going to take this reamer and it has a pilot on the end it'll go down this this is the wrong size but it goes down inside there you'll cut the hole out you go back and you take this and you ream it to size, which this in this case would be um, 500. So 500 or half an inch, exactly half an inch. And then the guide that you would put in there will be a will be a 500 guide. There again, these are, this isn't the right, the right guide, but it just happens to be sitting here. This is actually for a Mercedes head. So then you would take a guide like this, not bronze. Usually I don't run bronze on diesel stuff. Um, but you would take this and then you would hammer it into the head. Hammer, air hammer, press, depending on the head. Some are, some call for different things. These, we just use an air hammer to drive them in and then you top them off. But like I said, I'm not gonna put guides in a head that doesn't need it. Um, so that, you know, makes it cheaper for everybody involved. And if you can, the material that they use in these, in these heads is actually very good material. I like the material in these heads. Um, so, you know, we're not gonna, like I said, we're not gonna go into it. So that actually, I'll be able to do a little bit more tonight. <clears throat> so, um, this is, uh, still has all the crap and corruption in there uh, from that cylinder blowing up, which actually boggles my mind that the guide is still good, but I guess it, did, it obviously didn't run too long. But that's, you know, some of the crap that's in there, which is actually perfect that it's got a layer of soot on it. So it actually coming out real easy, but I'll go through and I'll probably just clean these up a little bit with the die grinder too, um, just to make sure that, I'll make sure you get all that crap and corruption out of there. You don't want that stuff floating around in there, especially on a new engine, tear the motor up, tear the, uh, the turbo up and stuff and I will do a video on the turbo had a couple of people ask about that I uh, just haven't got that far yet maybe do it this weekend we'll bang it apart and see what it looks like maybe do a rebuild on it I don't know maybe do something fancy we'll see I guess um, so anyways um, okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna level this baby off um, I'll do that um, I'll do that and then I'll come back and I'll show you guys I'll, I'll cut a couple seats um, and show you guys how the machine cuts the seats 
All right. See you in a bit. Okay, gentlemen, got this thing all set up now. Um, now what I've done is uh, I've leveled the head and what I do with the seats is I take, it doesn't have to be Surat stuff, but it's layout die. I mark it with layout die so you can see where you've cut and where you haven't cut. Now, that's the reason for the bluing. Now for setting up the cutters, so you take a valve. Now there's a bunch of different fixtures. This is just a simple fixture. You can see where I put um, Sharpie on it. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this real well, but see that shiny line on there? That's where I want my seat to start. This, the, the actual, the margin on the seat, or for it to hit the, I shouldn't say margin, to hit the um, seating surface on the um, head. So you basically, you line up your pointer and the reason that you put sharp, I put Sharpie on there is you run it back and forth and you can see where it's gonna hit on the, the, the valve face. And then this fixture, what you do with the fixture is this is the actual three angle cutter. You, I put um, Sharpie on that as well. And what you do is, is you do, that's how you set the cutter for your diameter of it. So you bring that in. There again, I know this is gonna be hard to see in the video, but you come across there and you hit that, that piece inside the cutter where you want the your your valve face to hit. So just thought I'd show that. A lot of people don't show that when they're showing these videos for some reason. It's not really a special process by any stretch of imagination. And then this is the, the pilot, which goes down inside, uh, goes down inside like this. And then you bring it around and cut. So and this is classified, what they call this is a live pilot. So the pilot is, is fixed inside here. Now, if you're doing a fixed pilot, this is the wrong size pilot, but what you do is this, so this has a little bit of a taper on it, but very little. This, this style has more taper. This is a fixed style pilot. And you would put that in there and you would jam it in there tight. Problem with that is, is that it, this the pilot is bigger on is bigger here than it is here so if there's any taper in this in the the guide at all um the the vowel the the it'll rock back and forth which imit or uh, which makes it hard to get the seat to be perfect and you want the seat is you know you can have a seat that's five miles of bad road and it'll seal but it doesn't look nice and it's just nice to have the seat looking the way that you want it to. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna throw this, actually maybe I'll do the first one just uh, with the video going like this. And then, uh, well actually I got a little bit of screwing around. So what I'll do is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do in time lapse to start with, and then on the last seat I'll bring you guys in and I'll have the machine all set up and then you guys don't have to watch me set the whole machine up to do it. So, um, okay, I'm gonna put you on time lapse and we'll be back in a bit. Okay guys, so cutting the last one here, I'll show you guys the process. Not really rocket science. There again. Okay, it's the machines and the know-how. Tools and know-how makes everything easy. So basically all you want to do is just bring it in until you see all three angles basically. I don't know you guys will be able to see that real well in the video, but I'll try to zoom in. And what I was doing with the uh, dial set up there was I was um, measuring to see what the recession was. And the recessions are all within the three thou of each other or so. Need to go a little deeper on that one. And I do like spec on these things and what you set it at are not always the same thing, uh, depending on what you're doing for a camshaft. Um, there's lots of variables that go into that. Um, you know, if you, they open, the open enclosure difference in depth changes airflow and yeah, there's, there's a bunch to that. Um, but for instance, uh, like these ones I'm setting between 60, between 60 and 65, um, the, these ones are gonna be closer to 60 versus these ones are gonna be 65.
All right, so um, now we got it everything. Now something you do want to, if you guys were doing this, um, you checking valve recessions and all that type of stuff, you want to make sure that you mark the valves um, when you take them out and you're putting them in and stuff because now this is, I'm going to use um, new valves on this head. Um, just, I want new valves in it. So um, I'm going to be using new valves. So all the new valves are being pretty close. Now, when you grind a valve, this is, head depth is going to change it's going to get smaller so if you have a valve that's been ground like as long as the margin is still good which is this this width here it's still good you can still use the valve but if you have one that's been ground let's say 10 thou more than the others and you do them all to the same the same to every valve um, using the same valve using the same valve um, and you put the other valves in there, you might end up with one's too deep, one's not deep enough. So that's just something that you want to, lots of times, um, you know, in more videos that I do, um, if I'm reusing valves and stuff like that we grind and check out good, you'll actually see me marking them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then in 24 valves, I do the same thing, but intake exhaust. But that's the reason that I do that is so that the valve ends up back in that hole. Not so much that it's seated to that hole because all the valves are going to be exactly the same and all your seats should be exactly the same but it's so that your valve depth is the same um, and then when we take them apart if we're putting back together without rebuilding them i like to put the valves back where the, back in the homes where they were because they are worn in so um basically i'm going to cut the video off there for tonight um, we'll come back um, i'm going to do it, it the process for the intakes exactly the same so i'll do that off camera you guys don't need to fiddle watch me do that um, I will do that part um, and then likely what we'll do I haven't decided yeah I'll o-ring this head so I'll show the o-ringing process um, which I've showed before um, in one of my other videos if anybody wants to watch it before that um, and then we will assemble the head um, and I think that I'm going to I'm going to clean up the seating surface from for the exhaust ports a little bit more and just see what it looks like I might actually surface that, um, put it back in the surfacer and surface that surface. If I do, I'll show a video of it. Um, but it doesn't, it's, it doesn't look very bad. So I think it'll clean up okay. But we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. Anyways, uh, so I guess that is going to be the end of this video. Like, subscribe. If you got any comments, questions, hit me down below. Um, anything that I didn't show that you want me to show. Um, I, I think I showed most of it other than leveling the head. But that's, like I said, it's pretty simple. You just level here and here but i am going to do some videos later on the equipment showing you how to use this said piece of equipment I, I got four or five pieces six i don't know a bunch of different pieces we'll show all of the different pieces of equipment um anyways uh catch you on the next one